Hello Capricorn, welcome, welcome. Um, it's Christy back again with your end of February into March reading. Capricorn, I use Capricorn, if you think of a mountain goat coming down a mountain, how tenacious it is. Using everything it's got to maintain its balance and not fall to its death. <laughs> Capricorns can be very ambitious. They are really good achievers. Okay. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Truth. Feels very concrete. And Saturn is like it's kind of like the the life coach or the business manager that slows you down and goes, Whoa, yeah, how are you gonna do that? Let's make a plan for that. So it's slow growth, slow movement, tenacity. Rules the 10th house, the world. <laughs> Saturn, Kronos, <laughs> time, divine timing. So patience, patience is needed. And it's ruled by earth, of course it is, stability. Okay, so this is interesting. I haven't pulled the cards. Thank you. Saturn's current energy. And what available potential is there in this time for Capricorn? What's their available potential? Thank you. Um, interesting. And what's the challenge for success? What's Capricorn's challenge for success? Wow. Wow. Feels pretty straightforward, but let's see where it goes. Okay. Your current energy. <sighs> Gaining wisdom. Maybe through some really hard work. So wisdom is how we apply what we've learned in the world. It's knowledge free from the limitations of the smaller mind. So it looks like you're coming into clarity and learning because the potential for you, here we go again, this sacred union, and I'm talking about within. So everything I do is in the first person. Um, it might mean, you know, a divine counterpart coming in, but I'll keep it in the first person because to me, this is about it, the inner sacred union of the masculine and the feminine. And also, you know, the shadow and the light and the right and the wrong and the good and the bad and what you can accept and what you reject, it's all of that beautiful harmonization so much harmonization coming through these readings we really are getting ready to step onto new timelines so we're just clearing out the closets here and your challenge to success in achieving this union this codependency i think this came through in leo's reading did it Codependency and custodianship. Hmm. So codependency is um, 
is a relationship that somehow defines you is sentences like, I am nothing without you. I can't live without you. Uh, you make me. Okay. So it's where we move into a non-elective process, but a reacting process because the part of us that hasn't come into alignment is seeking external validation. So codependent relationships depend on one another. You know, you are responsible for my happiness. It's that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> it's why people blame each other for failed marriages because there's, a, there's this unhealthy dependency where we can't cultivate our own satiety, you know, our own joy and freedom and sense of personal power. That all has to be cultivated. You'll have heard me talk about the, building the cathedral within. But where there's a hunger and an emptiness and a need, we'll search for that in the external. And what we'll do is we'll set up codependent relationships that feed us that. But the moment they no longer feed us that, they become responsible for our satiety, for feeling satisfied. Okay, so the hunger's got to be filled up from within, got to be nurtured from within. What does your heart want? What's your soul crying out for? When you get really quiet and go within, what can you hear? What can you see? Where's your truth? Because there's great wisdom to be had here in the union. And you might say the union could be independence versus codependence. Interesting. Very interesting. And I want to bring in codependence upon angelic guidance. <laughs> I'm a Sag. <laughs> I swim against the tide. Codependence with angelic guidance. Because if it isn't within, it's without. Okay. But that doesn't rule out inspiration. I don't want to complicate the field here because inspiration can come in straight from spirit. So where are your messages coming from? <laughs> so it's fitting that the wisdom, current energy, will go with the outcome. Ow. <laughs> So identifying the codependent relationships where you're not in your power, maybe where you're giving more than you receive, where there's an unhealthy balance. Great opportunity for clarity here. Rebalancing, reharmonizing, crikey, it's, wow. <laughs> I've just done the off Ucus reading and here we go with that beautiful healing serpent. Change, so much change. Time to heal. What do you need the most right now? If you take a moment and pause and drop into your heart, what do you need the most right now? Because what rises up in you might not be friendly in your collective, it might not be what they want to hear because you give so much that others have become dependent upon you, codependent upon you. We had this in another reading. Opening to infinite possibility. So Capricorn is fixed earth. Is it cardinal? It's cardinal earth. It leads, which means it might be leading through a certain set of parameters, which it perceives are immovable. All parameters are movable. Why? Because all behaviors are okay. So beautiful five in a uh, five year, stretch out in all directions. Stretch your energy, stretch your mind, stretch your heart. Because we're reaching into something that's so new, you may not be able to conceive of it yet. Open to the infinite, Capricorn. 
let go of what you think you know and be open to something radically different coming in. A new wisdom. Rest, time to heal. Rest, rest, rest. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, okay. Right, take good care. Um, I'll see you again soon, Capis. Um, thanks for being here. Please like, share, subscribe. Take care. Lots of love.